Hi everyone, Michael from Bully Now, bullyanow.com.au. That's right, I am not in the office. Um, I'm uh, recuperating, let's put it that way. I uh, haven't been on top of the world for the last couple of days, so um, I'm taking some time and uh, working out of one of our other offices not in town. So, um, yeah, but that doesn't mean we still can't do the Michael's Mailbox. We're going to wander through the releases of various videos for the last week or so. Um, looking at the comments and specifically uh, talking or discussing some of the uh, bigger comments that are made. So, you know, it's ones that might take quite a bit of um, typing the answer. So we'd rather do it just uh, quickly on a video or alternatively um, one that gets asked like the same question, but asked different ways. And that way we can just tidy it up really quickly. So stay with us. We'll go for about 25 minutes, maybe even half an hour. And uh, we'll go through all your comments and Discuss them from a, a dealer's perspective, I suppose, um, and uh, yeah, open up the discussion even more. If you want to make further comments on some of the things that I say um, in this, you know, don't hesitate to make those comments down below because we certainly go through them and uh, we try and bring them forward whenever we can. All right, let's kick it off with the uh, release of the 2023 one-ounce kookaburra. Now, this <laughs> I had to laugh in the comments of this one. It was a combination of love it or hate it, or where's the 10 ounce? <laughs> Whether they were meaning the 10 ounce 2023 cook or the 2022 cook, um, it seems to be a little bit of a lightning rod at the moment. And that's fair enough. Perth Mint has been dragging its heels a little bit on the 2022. Um, and there is one comment in here that absolutely breaks my heart um, where somebody says, um, yeah, here we go. So, um, there was a question about any news on the 2022 kookaburra. Now, we've been fairly open about this. Um, and in fact, we met Perth Mint over it. And, um, we actually televised their answer where they said it would be released um, in October. And obviously, things got in the way and it didn't happen. But there's a bit of a discussion that goes on. But um, where are we here? I've just lost it again. Um, this is from Silver Delta. And this absolutely breaks me. And I completely understand why he's saying it. Um, yes, I picked up the 10 ounce this afternoon. It's a bit more for postage, but looks like BN, Bullion Now, will have a ballot. And well, I'm getting a bit annoyed missing um, with Bullion Now, going back to buying more direct from the mint for these popular coins. <sighs> I, I get the sentiment. Um, I, I wish I had a solution. I really do. But while manufacturers are playing these silly games where they're releasing very limited numbers and then not supplying their dealers properly, keeping a good chunk of them for themselves. It makes us look, well, incompetent, I suppose, at the end of the day and not able to service our customer base properly. And that's incredibly frustrating. Um, and it's a comment that I've repeatedly had with the likes of Perth Mint and will continue to um, repeat and it will continue to fall on deaf ears, I suppose. But um, it's it's definitely heartbreaking where you you spend so much time building up um, a loyal customer base. You, you supply an industry, a group of people, and you want to do the best you possibly can for them. And then for various reasons, these things occur. Um, it is very, very frustrating for us. And I can only imagine how frustrating it is for you. So... Um, <laughs> While I don't like the fact you're going elsewhere, I completely understand the sentiment. All right, on to lighter things. So a few good comments about um, about the, uh, the the change of design and how it's got some similarity. Actually, Monotramata um, picked this up, some similarity to the 2013 Kookaburra. And I'd never, I, I hadn't actually joined the dots together, but he's 100% right. But then a couple of others um, jumped in and said that seems to be a pattern because the 2011-2021 koala and 2012-2022 koalas both look very similar. Now, I had a really quick look at it, and I can actually see what you're saying. And I wonder, and I have no evidence of this, okay? So this is just some guy rabbiting on, on, the, um, on the internet, but a comment that was made by one of the designers when we were over in Perth where he said that um, quite often they do, you know, multiple designs for one thing, and the ones they don't use quite often are, are put away in storage for potential future use. And I kind of wonder if they've not gone back and gone, well, what did we look at 10 years ago? Let's let's see what other designs were around that original one that we put out. And then they've started using or touching up some of those. I don't know. 
Oh, like I said, I have no evidence of that, but it's a it's a curious similarity that's been brought out. So, um, love the midnight gardener saying there. In any case, it's still better than the bird bath, and I could not agree more. I love, I actually love the one on the Waratah, um, the property. And I was saying this on one of the live streams recently. The property we live on um, has some Waratahs, and not all the time, but occasionally we do see the kookaburra sitting on them. So, um, I actually quite like it. Um, look. I'll get this one wrong, and I apologise right from the start. Lut Ming Xiao. Um, uh, it's the, the coin's the best design. Um, if silver price can drop to 18, and obviously he's talking, eight, well, I'm assuming um, they're talking 18 US dollars, um, it will be perfect. Be really careful about... Um, we all like to play the market. We all like to try and buy at the best price possible. So we're all looking for spot to go down just before we buy, and then after we buy for it to go up. But the number of people that I, a uh, number of customers that I have that have missed out on fairly serious capital growth, uh, both from a spot price perspective, but also from a collector premium perspective, um, because they've gone, oh, I'm just going to wait for price to drop a little bit before I secure some of those is, is crazy, the number of people. So be really careful. There are times, absolutely, and I've, I've said this on camera before, you know, we've had a bit of a run up. I'd, I'd take a pause here and I, I actually wouldn't be buying anything for a little while. Um, and there's other times where I've said, look, it's dipped down and now's the time, a really good time to get into it. Um, so I'm not saying it's not a wise thing to say. I'm saying it's a, a be careful thing. Be careful that you don't chase spot down because the number of people I know that miss out on fairly serious capital gains because of that. And it, it's very much a, a stock market saying, and um, I'm trying to think of the guy's name. It'll come to me after I finish the video. Kevin O'Leary, he's a big one for saying with um, with shares, and it's it's very similar in the precious metal market. And in fact, most investment markets, where he actually plots out um, how many um, how many days in a year that the price of a certain stock actually goes up. So while you, you might hold the stock for 365 days for the year, you'll find all the growth in its price actually comes in, you know, 10 or 12 days of those of that year. The other 340, 350 days, the, the asset does absolutely nothing. And that's very similar to gold and silver precious metals market where, yeah, it'll trickle up a little bit, trickle down a little bit, but the major movements are done over very short periods of time. And if you're not holding them for the, the whole period, then it's very easy to miss out on those gains. So again, um, I've got, got stuck on a particular topic, but just be careful about not buying um, until it, it drops a certain amount. Keep an eye on the market and then buy judiciously, buy intelligently, selectively. Um, there's been no release date for the one-tenth ounce cook that I, gold cook that I'm aware of. Um, there's a bit of a discussion here. Mark Twain kicks it off. Um, it's strange that they still have the Queen's face on it. I wonder how long that will be for surely not the entirety of 2023. Um, going by the conversations I've had with a couple of the mints and Perth Mint in particular, where they said we're trying to, and you can see this around the world, we're trying to limit the number of 2023 coins that we're producing with the Queen's effigy on it. And um, we're, we're delaying a lot of the releases. So we've seen a delay in the rabbit to a degree. We saw a delay in the Kookaburra release. We're seeing a delay in the Koala release um, and a lot of the others that they haven't announced yet will flow on. We're seeing those delays because they are trying to hold back the designs so they don't have to produce them with the Queen's effigy still on the back. Um, the Royal Mint has said, you know, we're producing the 2023 Britannia with the Queen's effigy on until December 31st and then we're not doing it after that date. So you're going to find that as we push through into 2023, um, as we yeah as we push through into um, 2023, that the um, the queen's designs will become less and the king's effigies will will become more. The question is how quickly that effigy gets through the system and all the checks before it actually reaches the um, the, the production stage. And I think on the collector coin side or the bullion coin side, I think we'll see it come through a lot quicker. Um, I'm going to be fascinated to see what they do with the silver kangaroo next year and how quickly they release that and whether it's whether they do a changeover, release it initially with the Queen and then move to the King later, or whether they complete the whole year with the Queen. Um, yeah, so we're seeing that that holding back of, of the design. 
Um, bullion, I think, will be okay. We'll see it. I think in circulation coins, I honestly don't think we're going to see any serious circulation coins out there, really. I know that the Royal Mint has produced the 50p, I think it is, but I don't think we're going to see any serious um, numbers of circulating coins until 2024 with the King's Effigy on it. Um, this continues onwards. Um, no, it must be on a different one, so I'm going to come back to it. Um, where there's a discussion about why why do Australians... In fact, we'll cover it now. I can't remember the exact quote, but it's, it's been made a couple of times over the videos where obviously the, the person is not from Australia um, or the people. There's a couple of comments there and they're saying, you know, I don't understand why the, the British and, and the Australians can insist on having the Queen's effigy on the back. You know, surely they can find something more local and colloquial um, to put on there. And look, absolutely we could, but um, our Australian law... The Commonwealth law states that we have to have the monarch's effigy on the back. It's the same um, pretty much around the world. Um, you'll find countries have, if you're going to produce a denomination, a currency for that country, it must have a certain obverse on it. Um, it's a pretty rare country that doesn't. I, I think even the States, I may stand corrected on this, but I think the States has got a fairly... Um, standard design that it must have and you can't step outside of that. And I don't see people saying that they need to get rid of the, um, you know, some of those those sort of designs. So it's pretty standard. If you're going to produce a, a money from that country um, or a recognised currency, then it's going to have to have that effigy on the back. You do whatever you like on the reverse um, and frequently do. Big discussion about the 10-ounce um, kookaburra. Um, I started off this part of the conversation about the 10 ounce and I'll finish it with the 10 ounce. Um, there's a, it is what it is. Um, I, I can't squeeze any more out of Perth Mint. Um, the 2022 has been released. Our allocation has been placed. Our order's been placed. We know exactly how many we're getting. We could actually run the ballot right now. We've held off. Um, and a little bit of that is so that, um, it's so that we know that we're actually going to get them turn up because a number of times we get products in and they're not exactly what we expect. And so, you know, we promise deliveries and then, you know, for a variety of reasons, things are held up and then we can't supply on the on the date. So we'd rather, we certainly won't do the ballot until I get a definite um, tracking number for that stock so I know when it's actually going to land here. Um, and we can actually start distributing it, particularly at the moment with the mess that the um, that the uh, courier system or the freight system is in particularly Australia, but around the world. Um, it's cactus, and I'm not sticking my neck on the chopping block voluntarily. <laughs> um, I do that enough without volunteering for it. Um, as far as the 2023 10-ounce goes, <laughs> no clue. I wouldn't expect to see it before October, November, December next year again. Um so, yeah, the 2023 one ounce should be arriving any day now. So hopefully we'll get those out very soon. I did say I'd finish on this, but there is one comment on here. Um, Vogue asks, uh, why don't you sell copper bullion? Um, because there's not the demand for it. Um, and it's also an incredible, I don't want to say waste of space, because that's not what I'm meaning, but it takes up a lot, a lot, a lot of room um, to source um, sufficient quantities of it to, to actually make a difference. So um, if we start getting more demand for it, um, we would possibly stock it. But at this stage, we don't have the demand for it. So it's not something we've particularly pursued. And I actually don't know of any refineries within Australia, like any mints um, or manufacturers, that produce copper coins or bars. I may stand corrected on that because it's not something I've particularly chased. Alrighty, a brand of silver we haven't seen before. This was the International Silver Unboxing. So we had a combination of Royal Mint and Bull Mint and Canadian Mint in this um, unboxing. So really good to see the, the um, Canadian maple back in stock. Um, it is the 2022, not the 23. So it will be the last of the 22s, I believe, that we'll be able to get hold of. Um, although you never know, there's every so often you get a, a wholesaler or a manufacturer that says, oh, look, we found these in the in the back of the vault. Are you interested? So, you know, there is certainly possibility that a box or two might come through in the future, but it's unlikely. We're expecting this to be our final um, delivery of 2022 maples. Um, the 20, 
three um, King Arthurs that were there. Um, a lot of love and a lot of hate for them. Um, and I'm never sure with these if it's a distrust of the Royal Mint because their quality hasn't been up to par of late. Um, but, um, yeah, some of the Arthurs said, you know, some of the Arthurs, some of the people, the comments were that King Arthur looked great and some of them said that they didn't like it. So it seemed to kind of split down the middle this time, which I thought was interesting. Great discussions about the bull mint coins. They, I, I can't overemphasize for a bullion coin, they are an absolute stunning coin. They've really, really nailed these ones. They are best in class, absolutely. Some of, they certainly give the Royal Canadian Mint a run for their money and several of the others. Even the Perth Mint, I would say they give um, Perth Mint a run for their money. They are just a beautiful, beautiful coin um, and really well produced. So, and a lot, lots of love for that. Um, there's a few comments there, SDI Customs um, commenting about 10 ounce coins and and um, and how good they look on the 10 ounce coin. Um, there's also a comment, and we haven't sourced any yet, but you can actually get um, the bull, bull and bear in the kilo coin. So um, we may look at that in 2023 because I think that would be a real stunner, but we haven't actually um, pulled that one yet. But STI Custom goes on to make a really interesting discussion here, and this could be a whole video on itself, and, and we have actually done these sort of types of videos before. Um, but with the increase in premiums making silver worth more over spot, you'd be better off buying a 10-ounce silver bar for 370 approximately than a 10-ounce coin for 467 if you're investing. Um, the only redeeming factor would be the coin may have collectible value to coin collectors, but if it were to be damaged or a milk spot appears, its collectability drops and again may be worth spot. Correct me if you have another opinion. Yes, I do, and no, I don't. You're 100% right. Um, but as a generalisation, and there's only one example I can think of where I'm actually wrong, a bar is always, always, always cheaper than a coin and always will be because the manufacturing process is far more simple and crude, if you like, for a bar than it is for a coin, which is far more labour intensive, particularly something like the kookaburras. Um, and that I'm talking um, bullion coins here. I'm not talking about, you know, proof coins and, and reverse proofs and high reliefs and all that sort of stuff, which is really going over the top. But even down to something like the kookaburra and the koala, each coin is, you know, inspected and encapsulated and all these types of things. Whereas a bar, they just... They spit them out, you know, all day, every day. They don't change the design every year. Um, you know, they're not subject to, like the kookaburra and the koala are, they're not subject to reporting back to the federal government because they're actually a currency. Um, you know, there's, there's all these sorts of processes and procedures that have to be in place that add to the cost of the coin. However, um, that coin is always worth that extra premium. Now, sure, I'm, and I'm absolutely shooting myself and being in the foot here by saying the coin is worth that because if you bring a silver coin or a silver bar into BN or gold for that matter, we're going to pay you spot price. We're not going to pay you any more because it's a coin. However, and we've been open about this, we're not trying to hide it. We're not trying to be sneaky about it. If you sell that coin onto the secondary market, it is it is more than normal for you to be able to claim back at least a large proportion of that um that premium that you've paid over spot because there's a recognition amongst people that it's a coin. You know, if I go to bullion now, I'm going to pay $5, $10, $20 over spot for that. So if you're asking $5, $8, $18 over spot, um, then I'm better off getting it from you than I am for bullion now um, if it's available right this second. So you can still get that premium back. Now, um, you are correct. If the coin is damaged or milk spot um, appears, collectability, collectability drops and all that sort of stuff. But I would argue the same to a very small degree with a bar because bars you can sell over spot into the secondary market quite often because, again, um, yeah, you bring it into bullion now. We're, it's an easy transaction. It's a safe transaction. We're going to pay you spot on the spot um, for that bar. Um if you sell it into the secondary market and you've got a Perth Mint bar, or a locally produced bar, a PAMP, um, a Valcambi, um, you know, anything along those sort of lines, people are going to say, well, look, I could go to Bullion now and I can pay, I don't know, I'm guessing here, I can pay $50 over spot for that Perth Mint kilo bar, um, or I can get it from you for $40 over spot. I'm, I'm going to buy it off you because I'm going to save myself 10 bucks. Um, so 
that collectability, that premium is there for the bars as well as the coins. But if that bar is damaged, if you've, you know, chopped into it, if it's got really manky, um, all those types of things, quite often it still loses that premium over spot into the secondary market and your alternative is selling it back to us at spot. And you will always get spot from us, you know, subject to the provisos that we're very open about. You know, it can't be anything over a 100 ounce bar in silver. It can't be any more than, uh, you've got to check FAQs on the website. <laughs> I haven't done it for a while, but I think it's any more than 50 kilos in silver in, a, in one transaction. Um, you know, all those normal things that we're very open about. But generally, you know, you've got a kilo bar, you bring it into BN, even if it's been beaten up, knocked around, you know, you've buried in the dirt, the whole box and dice, um, you've blown it up, whatever you've done to it, we're still going to pay um, spot price for it. So you're right, you're not right. I agree, I disagree, you know, like it, it, it depends. It's a situation by situation base um, or case. And I would absolutely pay 407 I pay 100 depending on the coin, obviously, but I would happily pay $100 more for a coin than a bar most times, most times, on a 10-ounce bar. I, I, I don't have an issue with it. Yes, I'm a coin guy, but I can see the potential, I can see the value, and I can certainly... It, it's not difficult to extract a, that sort of premium for it on the secondary market as well. So... That was a long answer, wasn't it? <laughs> um, so, but some really good support for um, those coins, and they really are a beautiful coin. Big dis discussion about um, uh, Tokalau, Tokalu, Tokalau. I think it's Tokalu. I never know exactly how to pronounce it, um, and you know where it is and who owns it and all that sort of stuff. A lot of these, um, a lot of these smaller islands are independent but dependent. They're, they'll be part of a territory. It's a little bit like. Um, Christmas Island, Norfolk Island, um, to Australia. They're independent, but they're actually still a territory of Australia. Um, so, um, Taukalu, Taukalau. The, the, you know the one I'm talking about. It's actually a territory of New Zealand, but it is actually independent. Um, it does rely on New Zealand. It uses New Zealand dollars for um, its local currency. Um, but it also um, sells its sovereignty. It's the wrong term, but you know where I'm going with it. They, they sell, they give permission for money. They give permission for different refineries, mints, manufacturers around the world to actually use their, their, um, their stamp to say, look, this is, um, this is legal tender in this country. Um, and they receive an income for it. And quite often, a lot of these, um, Pacific Islands or a lot of these countries, it's not just Pacific Islands that do it. Um, there's countries all around the world that do it. Um, but it's actually a major revenue source for them. So, in some ways, and it always sounds terrible coming from me because I'm a bullion dealer, but in some ways I actually encourage people to to buy these things because it, it supports these nations that really don't have any other resources to, to support themselves with. You know, they, they get a bit of tourism, but it's quite expensive to get out there. There's, you know, three flights a day sort of thing. And, you know, there's one airline that, that does it, so it costs an arm and a leg, um, or you can go by, by a ship and that costs a fortune. So... They have very limited income sources, so I, I'm not saying just go out and buy them just for charity, but don't be shy of buying these things. There is certainly recognition in the market for what they are. They're not some dodgy thing, um, and it does support a country that has very few other ways to support itself. So get out there and get some of these. They, they're some of the designs and productions like these ones from Bull Mint, second to none. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get into that one, I can tell you. Um, there's a comment here from Stephen about uh, the Silver King Arthur's only being three nines. Quite a lot of um, coins, silver coins and bars um, from major mints around the world uh, are only stamped three nines. It's their only requirement. They don't feel like they need to stamp anything four nines. Um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. Quite often, eventually... Uh, public pressure will force them to update, but quite often they're quite happy with their three nine stamp and they keep using it um, and they don't see the reason in updating it. Doesn't mean the silver is of any less quality and I'll guarantee you that if I tested every single one of those King Arthurs um, with every test that you wanted to, to throw at it, it would still test as four nines. Um, yeah, more of a discussion on that. 
bit of a discussion about when the kookaburras arrive in the States. Um, there is a rumour going around that they're not sending too many to the States, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, like I said, that's pure rumour and conjecture. There is nothing from the Perth Mint. Please don't take that one to the bank. Um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I love the comment from MP. Heads up, BN. Maples must be fake. They haven't milk spotted in the tube yet. Um, there was a time where that would have been exactly true and would have been my concern if I'd opened them. But I think since about 2016, 2017, the uh, Royal Canadian Mint has pulled up their socks and they're actually really good now. So it's not uncommon to get the newer ones through um, where they don't have. In fact, I can't think of the last modern maple that I've actually seen milk spot. And I'm sure someone out there will point one, point to one. But um, yeah, as far as I'm aware, there's none there. A few comments moving on to Where's Michael? And um, that was on last um, last Wednesday. Um, gee, that's two Wednesdays in a row. I haven't been able to make it to um, to the uh, live stream on the Wednesday. Um, this one I'd actually hoped to get to, but I was uh, stuck on a ferry with no internet. So I made a brief um, comment or a brief video before I got on board to say, hey, I'm on a ferry. I've got no internet. I won't be there for the live stream. But we will have one on Friday, and that's pretty much the same this week. I'm, like I said, I'm actually recuperating this week, um, but we will be back on Friday with the live stream. Um, a lot of hints on the special, because I did mention the special on there. Um, it was a good special. Uh, we did, um, uh, what did we do? Some 10-ounce, um, oh, Magnificent Maples. We did Magnificent Maples at a super-duper, uh, pretty much wholesale price over spot. So, um, yeah, that was a good one. And it was a beautiful location, and it was a beautiful trip across across the water. Um, and I did have uh, some of my family with me going across as well, so it was good fun. Um, had a good time, but we still did some work while we were there as well. So all good, and thanks for the support and the comments on there. Ah, now this is the one, and I'm running out of time here, but this is the one that I really wanted to comment on. So what's going to happen to gold in 2023? If you haven't watched that video yet, I strongly suggest you do. Not that I'm saying that Andrew and I have some secret insight into um, what's going to happen next year and we pin it exactly, but it does give you two sides of the coin. Andrew is very much a technical analyst. Um, I am far more of a um, gut feel and let's see what, um, what the future brings. And so it's... It's a two opposing views. And I'll, one thing I will guarantee you, I will guarantee you that both Andrew and I are 100% wrong. When we look back on that video in 12 months' time, that neither of us will have gotten it right, that the world will have done all sorts of different things, the market will have turned itself inside out several times and we'll look back and go, you idiot. But it does give you, if nothing else, and this is why I'm encouraging people to watch it, if nothing else, it gives you... It gives you hints and ideas at what to look for coming down the pike so you can make a decision for your scenario and what you should do with both buying and selling, moving into and through next year and the year after and the year after. And that's what you've got to take away from it. Don't spend too much time. And a lot of the comments in here are, you know, very much, oh, well, I disagree because of this and that and the other. And that's great. We're not trying to nail the numbers, although it'd be great if we can look back and say, look, we got it right, but I don't think we will. Um, but it's really, it's very much a case of these are the types of things that impact on the market. These are the types of things that you need to look at. These are the types of things that you need to consider as you consider your investment, your stack, and what you're doing to protect and preserve your wealth as you move forward through life. And it may be, Andrew makes a comment of, you know, I wouldn't be buying gold at the moment. I'm actually the reverse. I'm actually looking at gold. At the moment, the gold-silver ratio has come back, um, and I'm very much um, looking at different purchases, different things, um, and converting some of my um, some of my silver into, um, into that gold because it, not yet... I don't want to get too stuck in, although we should do a video on the gold-silver ratio because it's changed quite a lot since we've talked about it last. But it is coming back, and the indication is that it will come back further, particularly um, with China coming out of their COVID restrictions um, and the US settling down a bit. Europe's still a basket case, but um, the US and China are both giving some positive-ish signals. I wouldn't say they're positive yet, but they're positive-ish. Um, anyway, right off topic, but... 
please, 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 if you get a chance, go back and review that video more as an educational thing than anything else. All right, let's hit the comments and we'll try and um, see where people are going with it. So it's purely a gold discussion. We are going to shoot the silver one. I was hoping to do it. I'm still hoping to do it this week, but it may not be till next week because, like I said, I'm actually um, in a little bit of recuperation at the moment. Um, but a few good comments. Um, Dios Bananos. Um, people always talk about what happened in the late 70s with gold and expect it to happen again, but it's a completely different world now. There is more scepticism about gold as an asset class as well as an inflation hedge, especially in the West, and there is a lot more competition from other types of investments that offer superior returns on paper. In an area where, era where people are constantly chasing yield, gold is an unattractive investment and is going to take a real crisis for investors to dogpile back into it. I don't think I could disagree with this more. Um, so, yes, we are an entirely different world than we were back in the 70s, and I would argue we're in a completely different world to what we were back in, you know, even five years ago because of what's gone on. Um, but the, the world is constantly changing. Every day is different. Um, I, I listened as a, as a little tacker. I listened to my grandfather and, and what the world was like pre-World War, well, post-World War I. He was alive for World War I, after World War I, through the Depression, through World War II, um, and then after. I listened to my father um, who talked about, you know, post-war um, and going through the 60s and 70s into the 80s. And I've seen myself, I was born in the 70s, um, and I'm a product of the, um, you know, 80s, 90s, um, and into the 2000s. And I can tell you that every single era, every single year, every single decade is entirely different from the previous ones, but the echoes still remain. And so what happened in the 70s, while it will not happen again, the echo will come again, and I will guarantee that. Um, and gold is absolutely... I would say people are less sceptical about gold now than they were even five to ten years ago because assets have shown time and again their vulnerabilities. Um, and there was, I, I know um, Joe and I uh, frequently argued and we never ever managed to release a video about cryptocurrency um, and precious metal and the pluses and minuses of both because we'd go for an hour and a half to two hours on camera and we'd really go hammer and tongue at each other. And um, there was a really good debate, but we could never actually, I don't think, honestly release that to, to the world because um, you have to see it to understand what I'm saying. It's not that we got abusive or anything along those sort of lines, but it, 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 it highlighted how, um, how gold and crypto had a lot of similarities, but they had complete... Um, differences as well. And I would say that with every asset class that there is, every single asset class, every single asset class has positives and minuses. And you have to view them. There are times to hold property and buy property. There are times to be cautious with property. There are times to hold precious metals. There are times to be cautious with precious metals. There are times to hold potentially cryptocurrencies, and there are times to absolutely not hold cryptocurrencies. There are times every single asset out there has its time in the sun and its time when it's when it's not. And you have to decide when that time meets your criteria. I've bought, I've bought gold at the top of its market and still been very, very satisfied with the price, even though the price has come back because the transaction has done what I've wanted it to do. I've bought at the bottom of the market and been disgusted because it's gone up and the way it's gone up and how it's gone up and the fact that it didn't satisfy the criteria that I was actually requiring at the time. And I can say that about every single asset class that I've ever invested in. Um, as far as yield goes, people know that there is no yield on, well, no real yield. You can actually squeeze with, with renting it out. And I absolutely do not want to get into that discussion now. <laughs> happy to do that another day. But there is, you're not buying, um, you're not buying gold or silver for its its return on on uh, on dividends. You're buying it for its protection of your um, purchasing power, your protection of wealth over time. It's an insurance policy that has capital gains potential. And as we proved with a video back in 2020, and Ruben and I are going to redo that video very, very soon, where we looked at the average price, and I've, I've talked about this, um, so I'll keep it very brief. But we, 
we talked about the average price of a property in Melbourne um, in 1971, which was, um, uh, I, good grief, I've gone blank. Um, it was, I think it was $13,000. I'll have to go back and view it again now. Um, and the equivalent number of ounces of gold, which was 330 ounces. We fast forwarded um, back to um, to 2020, where um, the average house price was 900000 and 330 ounces of gold in 2020 bought $900,000 worth of property. So that's it's given you exactly the same return as property's done over that 49-year period. So um, it, 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 is, it gives you the superior return. It doesn't in the short term. You know, if you're buying it today, selling it tomorrow, you know, you're going to get bitten. If you're buying it for a dividend, if you're buying it for a rental return, you're going to get bitten. But if you're buying it to, to maintain that purchasing power, to stay stable with other investments over time, you will absolutely do it with gold, um, uh, you know, moving forward. Now, yes, that's not financial advice. This is the ramblings of an old man on the internet. But you've got to understand what you're trying to do. If you're trying to leverage something, property is going to be far better because you can leverage property far greater than any other asset um, out there. You know, you can get... There are times when I've seen you able to get 110% um, financing on property. So... You know, no one's going to do that for, for shares. No one's going to do that for um, for precious metals. No one's going to do that for cryptocurrencies. No one's going to do that for um, any of the commodities or any of those types of things. Property, if you're comparing it to a leveraged position in property, it's, it's, a, non, it's a no-brainer. But if you're looking at straight, outright, purchase-to-purchase purchase over a long period of time, precious metals absolutely will offer... Um, a very similar return to any other major asset. <laughs> All right, um, I've, I'll get off my soapbox on that one. Um, gold digger Dave, I can see physical gold continuing to carry higher premiums due to demand and shortages. There is nothing surer than that, and we've seen it happen, particularly since the start of COVID, where we have seen premiums, both because people have been greedy, but also because people have been, and by people I mean um, larger manufacturers and things like that, um, they've been a bit greedy. They've said, well, there's a shortage on, I can charge a bit more for it, but also because of inflation. And we've seen that inflation coming through more strongly now. But um, we're also seeing, you know, it's, it's dearer. Gas prices are through the roof. Wages are going up. Insurances are through the roof. I just had the bullion now insurance policy renewal far out. Did that make my eyes water? Um, so all these things are going up. So those premiums are pushing right out and will continue to do so going up through the long term. And there's a comment on here, Somewhere, and I'll, I may I may not find it, so um, I'll talk about it now. Where someone actually comments that you know, don't talk about the paper market price, talk about the physical market price, and there is absolutely an argument there. And I've commented on this many times where we've seen the, the price, the paper price of precious metals, gold, silver drop, but the orders that I'm placing with the refineries are actually dearer because it's physical than prior to the paper price dropping. So there is absolutely two markets there. They usually move in lockstep, but frequently, semi-frequently, they will move out of lockstep and that premium on your physical will actually blow right out far more than the spot price on the paper asset will. Um, lots, of, lots of arguments going on, which I love. Um, so due to sheer magnitude of the financial market, oversteering seems unavoidable. So they're talking about the big market. This is Silver Delta. As the government tries to apply the brakes, the collision is in uh, vision. Absolutely, the market will bounce. That is simply the animal in this environment. I'm very cautious, but I am a buyer. And I would actually, I, I think that's more the way I lean. Um, if, if you watch this video, uh, more than the way Andrew talks, where he talks more far from a fundamental perspective. Um, I think that emotion is going to be the um, catch cry of um, of 2023. And as a as an ex um, pilot or as a pilot, um, and it, it, I'm not. There's a thing. It, it's across a lot of industries. Um, ships, you know, the inertia that you have going. You try and change the direction of um, of, a, of a large aircraft or a large ship or um, a train. I was talking to a train driver not that long ago and he was talking about having to apply the brakes and controlling the carriages and things like that with their inertia when they're fully loaded, full of iron ore and things like that. Um, any of those things. The inertia 
keeps you going, even though you're madly trying to correct the other direction. Um, and until the inertia stops and starts coming back the way you've decided, um, you know, you, you, you tend to overreact. And I can absolutely imagine that governments will do that because of the, the, the inertia both of, um, of the population but also of the voters um, and the pressure that they apply and industries apply. Um, so, Michael, what you're talking about in principle is a great idea, but in practice that leaves us wide open to having the rug pulled, pulled out from under us. Um, maybe. That's, that's not an invalid comment. Um, I like, I don't know if this is the real Warren Buffett, but Warren Buffett's made a comment on here. Um, I think the Australian dollar will continue to be strong towards the end of 2022. Um, and you're correct, it, it actually has strengthened because of that increase in interest rates that we've just had. First half of 23, due to playing catch up on the situation after the situation in China gets better and the dovish tone of the US feds. After that, I think the Australian dollar will be weaker um, against the US. Um, could be. Um, and hopefully gold stronger against the US and the AUD. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I actually don't think the US, um, the Australian dollar will stay strong. I think we'll ease back because I think the Americans will keep increasing their interest rates. Um, but it's a good call with China. If China really does um, come out of these COVID lockdowns and comes back stronger next year, early next year, we will absolutely see commodity prices um, increase and the demand increase. Um, and we will absolutely see the Australian dollar strengthen because of that in relation to the US. Um, however, I suspect that, I, I still don't think that's going to be the scenario. I still favour the weaker Australian dollar. I think even if China does come out, they're facing a lot of other issues as well as COVID. Um, you know, we've spoken about a few of them before. Um, so I think there's going to be a few things at play there that is going to, to put pressure on the Australian dollar moving forward. Ah, Wombat, Tasmania is the only state in Australia that the monarchy, monarchy technically owns any gold that is found here. One of those hangover laws before Federation. I didn't know that. So there you go. Uh, I did make the comment about how um, Australia is lucky and that we have a lot of gold um, in the ground. Um, and there's a lot of uh, comments about, you know, well, it takes years to get it out of the ground and all these types of things. Um, so um, a, a bit of support for that saying, yes, supply in the ground means nothing in a bull market or a potential one. Uh, potential one. We can't buy what hasn't already been mined. That's actually not true. Um, a lot of mines uh, forward sell what they've got in the ground. Um, and you will actually see that. Uh, you'll see a reflection in share prices and things like that because of the the the, the the gold or, or the, the uh, commodity that is actually stored in the ground. So don't ever downplay the fact that we are sitting on the world's wealth in, in commodities in this country. Even though we haven't pulled them out of the ground yet, the potential is there and that potential is recognised worldwide. And that is absolutely the strength. Um, what we were just talking about with China recovering, um, if China does recover, it's the potential demand of what we've got in the ground that will actually drive up the, the, the Australian dollar and things like that. So there is absolutely um, a, a lot of meaning to what we have in the ground. Um, so don't ever downplay that. It is incredibly important and incredibly, um, it goes a long way to why Australia is, is considered such a strong country and the lucky country. We, you know, as Australians, we whinge and moan about Australia and the laws here and, and the health system and the roads and the, you know, and don't forget I'm Victorian and, and I've just gone through what we've been through in Victoria and, I, and I'm not going to go political on this, but I'm amazed at, at the, the status quo of our parliament. I can't believe that we fell into that again. But I would still rather live in... I, I've travelled the world many, many, many times um, and I have been involved in the healthcare systems and the road systems and the policing systems of, of several countries, many countries from around the world, there is no place like Australia. I will, I will never voluntarily leave this country on a one-way ticket. Um, so, yeah, can't emphasise that one enough. Um, interesting, this um, JP Morgan playing the custodial role with um, the popular GLD. Um, that's becoming more and more of an issue. Uh, I would love to do a much broader chat on that. I don't know enough about it. I really, I feel quite guilty about the fact that I haven't done enough research on it. Um, 
and I think it. Um, I, I think it's interesting that they've tried to push diversity away from. I'm having a, a mental blank as to the other company. It's not. Was it HSBC that that was holding GLD? I think it was HSBC, um, and they've gone for diversity by going across to JP Morgan, another one that has been done for price manipulation. Um, so. I would love to see a broader discussion on this um, and we should see if we can get a few people together and have a broad discussion on it. Um, and I fully support um, the, the final comment on that, which says another ETF not actually backed by metal. Yeah, we're getting into some real grey area there. So just be very careful if you're going into the quote-unquote paper market that is backed by physical. Make sure it actually is. Um, it makes me nervous, very, very nervous. Um, it's all good while things are going well, as we've seen in the um, crypto market of late. Um, it's only when you turn around and try and um, and, and try and uh, look at things when when there's a bit of turmoil about that you actually find what you're looking for. It's the same way as same thing as I say for insurance. You never know what you're actually insured for until you make a claim, until things have gone wrong, and that's when you find out exactly what you're insured for. Um, and that's almost it. We have a quick conversation about when will the shop be shut. So just a few comments about that. Um, the one that I do need to emphasize yet again um, is, or two things actually. One is that um, if you want any shipping done prior to Christmas, you need to get the request in before Friday, uh, this Friday, so Friday the 9th of December, because we won't be shipping, we won't be taking any more shipping requests after that until the new year. So if you want anything shipped out, please make sure you get it to you get that request to us prior to Friday, the 9th of December. Um, the second thing I need to emphasize is, and I'm just I'm doing this now so people don't panic over the Christmas break. You are going to see our website come down for several days over the Christmas break. No, we're not disappearing into the ether or any of those sorts of things. We're finally getting to that thing that I've been threatening for well over 12 months, where we're upgrading um, the whole of our back end system all the computer systems, the whole box and dice, and the new website is going to roll out. So um, the gurus of greater intelligence than mine have all indicated that we need to actually shut the website down for a few days so they can transfer data and get clean data across and, and carry no et cetera's or anything like that or, or inaccuracies. Um, so you, it will disappear for a few days over that Christmas New Year break. We'll keep it to as little time as possible, but it is going to be a few days, and I just want to get that out there so no one panics. All right, that's it for another Michael's Mailbox. Sorry, what didn't come to you live this time, but uh, it's great to actually slow down and go through some of these um, these comments and, and conversations um, and just chew the fat a little bit more. I can't encourage you enough to actually make more comments both um, beneath, under here on uh, this YouTube, but also in the YouTube videos that we release going forward. We are making more of an effort to actually get engaged and make comments on these and, and join the conversations because it's a great way for us to get this discussion and get this education out there. So please, 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 I encourage you to make more and more comments where you can and share it where you can too. Some of these discussions lead to some really good discussions with people who, who haven't really been exposed to that precious metal investment market. So um, yeah, can't encourage that Encourage that enough. Stay tuned later on the week. Um, Friday, we will have our live stream yet again. Um, there's some good unboxings coming up and hopefully some, uh, some specials moving into the Christmas period as well. All right, stay safe. We'll talk again soon. See ya.